Okay. Hello, everybody. Greetings. Welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I am your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I will now formally pipe aboard my illustrious co host and mentor and the very founder of um, Newsletter Censored in 1977 with my authentic bosun's whistle. Arr, welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting truth starship, the starship censored, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this Palm Sunday and Good Friday week of 2014. How are you feeling there, Chief? Still have my problem. Oh, uh, that you were telling me Wednesday. My when we, digestion. When we had our weekly uh, business meeting on every Wednesday afternoon. Uh, it is now, um, let's see, it is now uh, April the 12th. 12th. April the 12th. 2014 Saturday April the 12th in the early afternoon and the weather's beautiful spring is finally here spring has finally sprung it sprung it sprung sprung it is this the week of the pagan uh, holiday yeah well they're all pagan they're all pagan but you know the the uh, celebrated Palm Sunday yeah, and the worship of the goddess yeah well, the, the celebrated Palm Sunday and Good Friday week is uh, what this show uh, is, uh, even though Jesus did not die on uh, Friday, correct? Correct. In reality. In reality. Okay. I have one thing to talk about. Um, oh, going to be a short show. No, 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 no. No, my, my monologue, you know. I have one thing to talk about because it's the only thing I wrote down. <laughs> well, it was important enough. If, if I don't write topics down during the course of the week, it's like out of sight, out of mind. Because I have so much going on. I just want to thank the director of the Historic Patterson Museum, uh, Mr. Giacomo Di Stefano, uh -huh. and... The Renaissance Man Can Create for participating with me in three wonderful shows I did yesterday at the historic Patterson Museum at 2 Market Street, Patterson, New Jersey, in the historic district, right next to America's newest national park, the Patterson Great Falls. Okay, and I want to salute Mr. Giacomo Di Stefano, the director, all right, for having us. And uh, we will be doing street performances uh, this year facing Spruce Street right from the museum representing the great museum which is in fact American history in itself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you've got to check out the website you have to go to the museum it is loaded with American history uh, including one of the videos we did uh, is part two of the Samuel Colt um, Firearms exhibit, which is in the Patterson Museum, because Samuel Colt's company that made the the guns that won the Wild Wild West was in Patterson, New Jersey, and they have a beautiful exhibit there. And I did a great video on it, very uh, much more detailed than the first one I did with Jimmy, uh, little Jimmy Pesto. Okay, uh, uh, let me get to the topic. There is a uh, about a 52 minute video on YouTube that you must watch. Uh, much of it is in English, but it's also in uh, German and French. German and French, okay. But it's a very important video. Mm. And it's titled The Pyramid of Waste. Is that correct? The Pyramid... Pyramids of Waste. Pyramids, plural. plural. Py pyramids of Waste. Write this down. Watch the video because... The light bulb conspiracy. The video is about the um, one of the uh, uh, evil, wicked, underhanded uh, uh, tactics of uh, capitalism, planned obsolescence. Now, what was 
your review or take on the video after you watched it. Tell people what you have learned. Well, at, uh, some time ago, uh, corporations got together and etc. and they wanted to make a cartel yeah. so that the, all of the corporations would uh, have their products plan to go bad at certain times right so that people would buy new products and that would you know just keep driving the economy really yeah that's what it was all about and they tried to get it in law they tried to legalize it so it's a rigged system like we've been saying right along and the uh, products like the light bulb were designed to burn. There's a light bulb in a firehouse, I believe it is in Los Angeles. It is definitely in California. It's been burning for 100 years. Wow. The filament has been burning for 100 years. They don't know what it's made of. And that, that's, the guy died. And that's proof right made. there. That's proof right there, including the, in, the first electric vehicle back in the 1920s sometime is both proof that that um, not only uh, that the electric car has been uh, all the bugs and problems had to have been removed from the electric vehicle decades ago uh, not only that but the fact that light bulbs can last yeah well the light bulb companies this proof a hundred years the light bulb companies got together and uh, it has been determined that the light bulb should only last 1,000 hours. Because they make it so. They make it so. Now, according to uh, what I've read and seen and etc., LEDs today can last 25 years. Oh, oh, definitely. So, LEDs are, are, are replacing the f uh, compact fluorescent bulbs. Well, yeah, but I'm talking about longevity. Longevity, yeah. and, and, and they use less electricity than the compact fluorescent mm -hmm. bulbs, too. Mm -hmm. They run cooler. The point of all of that is that corporations use us, abuse us. Exploit us. Exploit us, and we pay them. They get subsidies. We shovel money to them. They get tax subsidies galore from taxpayers' money. Now, here's the point. Unbelievable. If, and then they screw us. If a company needs subsidies, grants, tax abatements, or whatever, you know what that's telling you? The company's not doing well, it's inefficient. And in our capitalistic system, it has no right to exist. It's their own fault. That's, That's the way the crab cake crumbles in capitalism. Some you die, someone else comes along and takes your place. Somebody loses, and for every winner, there's a bunch of losers. Creative destruction. And, and yeah, it's like, it's part of competition, which is of Satan anyway, but it's part of competition in capitalism that, that there's a certain percentage of businesses that fail statistically and uh, for whatever reason for whatever mm -hmm. reason they fail uh, not all of them are run by stupid people not all of them um, are you know um, well usually people that uh, are successful monetarily usually get that big through ill-gotten gains in the capitalist system. What does the Bible say? He who makes haste to be rich she is not innocent. Shall not be innocent. That's correct. And uh, as uh, as the nail sticketh between two stones, so does sin sticketh to buying and selling. Exactly. Now does From that the beginning? Now Fox News. Does that sound like God is a, is a conservative Republican? As I put on Facebook and there's last more, night, there's more the Bible quotes that somebody oh. was saying something yeah. about the politics and etc. And they're trying to make the case that uh, you know, like Democrats are a little better. The point is, as Wilhelm Reich said, all politics is pathological. So forget about parties and stuff of that nature. Parties means means big bucks, campaign contributions, yes. and that means corruption. Correct. 
So as long as there's money, uh, and, and there's no even playing field with candidates. No. As long as money's in the picture, and and if, if money's in the picture, because partly because of parties, and they they require these uh, massive campaign contributions, and then they owe favors when they get elected. Exactly. So that's what the problem is. All politics is pathological. So forget about politics. The system has to be changed. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The system's got to be changed and uh, people have to get behind independence and not parties. And if, if corporations and people who support them and etc. Uh, 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 praise the capitalistic system, then I got news for you, pal. Live by it. And if you can't support yourself without subsidies and grants and tax abatements and etc., die! Right. And let some new company yeah. take over. Well, they, they, they don't care if the poor die. Oh, you see Mr. Paul Ryan's new budget, don't you? Oh, Pinocchio number one. Oh, yeah. Paul Ryan and what is it, uh, uh, Ted Cruz? Needle, the two needle nose, uh, the two Pinocchio. The Pinocchio twins. One thing about Rand Paul, he's taking up the, uh, he's attacking Dick Cheney. The man, the, Iraq with, the, War. the man with the mechanical heart, the tin, the tin woodsman in the Wizard of Oz that was looking for a heart, and uh, it's like what you call it, uh, Iron Man, Iron, Iron Man. Except Iron Man uh, has a little bit more morals. Iron Man, even though he is <laughs> kind of gruff and yeah, he's got. Know. He had a nuclear-powered heart, I believe. That well, was that installed was by a Ru that was installed by a Russian scientist. Yeah, at first it was done by battery. He had a battery. Yeah. In the for Iron Man 1 or whatever it was. Yeah. Then he got a better one. Yeah. Now, Dick Cheney, uh, is it or is it not true that when Dick Cheney announced the, uh, the soon-to-be invasion of Iraq, uh, all the GOP uh, big shots got New up guy. and clapped, standing They ovation. loved it. They loved it. They loved it. The war profiteers. More money for Halliburton. More money for the private contractors, etc., etc., etc. Yeah. And more money for the Pentagon to lose. Right. You know, it's like, uh, and you know, and CEOs, which are the real demons, they, they always blame it on the stockholders. Oh, we have to do right by the stockholders. Shareholders. Yeah, shareholders. And like, like I always said, shares of what? Common stocks, right? What are common stocks? Okay, they're investments in companies, a small, medium, or large. But they're speculative. They're Not speculative. Not only that, the big boys. Not a Ponzi now, scheme. The big boys and girls now they have an advantage over you with their speedy computers. They know what you are going to do, and they do theirs before you. I'm sure the stock. Well, the, the man on 60 Minutes recently, he blew the whistle on the stock exchange. Uh -huh. He said it's rigged. Exactly. The stock exchange. Exactly. It's a, it's a game. It's a game for the elitists. Exactly. And yeah. every once in a while you have a breakdown and, and the poor jerk with a 401k or whatever, get a pension or something, he loses money. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's the, your stock market. The little guy with the Keo or 401k, okay, with the nest egg that he socks away, ends uh -huh. up losing, and the big fat cats end up winning every time. Uh -huh. You know, uh, you know, um, but uh, I, I apologize for the idiots outside uh, making a, a, talking about stupid everyday things, interrupting the show. But anyway, uh, getting back to planned obsolescence, it's it's uh, it, to me it's a it's a dishonest way to make a living. I mean, it's to it's to rig something to burn out. I mean, appliances burn out early now. Vacuum cleaners, uh, um, printers, uh, 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 f fans, uh, printers. Oh, especially, and it and 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 the inkjet costs more than the damn printer. So, the so printer, it, it, yeah. it, you buy a new printer, you get a new inkjet. It doesn't pay to 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 get a printer. And then when you try to get the inkjet refilled at a Walgreens or a Staples, they say, "Oh, we don't. We're not geared to refill." the new inkjet cartridges. We don't have the equipment to refill them. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't have the equipment to do that. 
And uh, what other things burn out? Um, uh, uh, any appliance, any appliance, even air conditioners. Yeah, nobody repairs a toaster. Be today. Before you know it, the compressor shot. You ah. can't. You can't get a new compressor because putting a new compressor costs more than the air conditioner. Uh -huh. The toasters burn out. Um, yeah, in general, many, many appliances burn out rel relatively early compared to the older appliances. You know, and uh, it's rigged. It's dishonest. It's, 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 uh, I, I think it, uh, stop me if I'm wrong, isn't it part of the deregulation of companies by the Republicans? Well, by, you could regulate them to make better products. By Reagan, uh, uh, who did that? You know. Well, to make better products, what about making the products um, have a normal, uh, well, what is a normal? Uh, usage life? What is a normal? Normal, is, know what, that, normal, is, when you, is, normal is when you don't rig it to, to burn out early. Yeah, but you have to prove that, number one. The point is that you let the companies do what they want, and therein lies the problem. Well, your regulation is needed. Yes. Needed. See? Yeah. And, and of course, all the nincompoop numbskulls out there that uh, vote according to their cultist, phony religion. I'm talking about the Bible Belt states, the Western states. The Midwestern states that uh, call, yeah. call themselves red states that vote against their best interests. They vote Republican who are for the rich. These people don't have a pot to piss in, but oh no, they have to vote Republican. Because why? Because of their cult. Well, they're going to be celebrating a lot this week, aren't they, with their cult? Oh yeah. Huh? Pagan, pagan Easter, right? This is their second big uh, 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 pagan holiday. Christmas and now Ishtar. Ishtar. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, whatever happened to the original Christian holidays of the Bible? They're in there. They're in there, but nobody yeah. talks about them commercially. No. You know. No. Uh, Certainly not the general public. They don't know. Yeah. Oh, you were saying something to me off the air about uh, the three wise men. Oh, I saw a um, uh, video last night on Facebook. I uh, don't even remember the uh, title, but it had to do with the nativity. Yeah, the, it, you know, the birth of Jesus. Okay. And it was uh, two hours and 20 minutes. Really? Yeah, I stood through the whole thing. I, I, I hear it is, uh, it's possible that he was not born in a manger amongst uh, barnyard animals. That he was born indoors somewhere. No, he was. He, uh, he was? According to the Bible. Oh, he was? Okay. Yes. Yes, there was no... Uh, because of the census that Herod, you know, uh, Caesar uh, told Herod he wanted a census. And people had to go back to their where they were born. Joseph had to go back to Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And when he got back there, of course, there was no room at the inns or anything. So she was going to deliver. So he had to find some place where he could lay her down and, you know, proceed with the birth. And that's what he got. So their decision uh, uh, due to the census made a lot of census to them. The census was probably Levy bells. probably uh, a way of you know taxing, finding out who to tax. Yeah, they had taxes back and then too. And as far as Herod was concerned, it would help him because he was he was also uh, uptight about the fact that this child was going to be born a king. A uh, threat to him. A threat yeah. to his reign. Now, who exactly were the three wise men? You were telling me. Melchior, Caspar, and uh, Balthazar. Wow. They were like scientists. They were like they, al alchemists and astrologers. You mean. Yeah, astronomy. And that's why they saw the star. You know, ah. Venus and Jupiter and etc. etc. And they were going to align and... Uh, and, 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 and they followed this star. You know, they were in the desert and, and, and yeah. traveling for 
like over 104 days. So that's so, some trick, man. So uh, they weren't scorned for knowing astrology and astronomy. God didn't punish them for doing that. Like today, the right wing fundamentalists will tell you, "Oh, you you do you dabble in astrology? Oh, you're going to hell." Well, you ain't going to hell because there ain't no such place. You know, I saw that banner uh, yesterday that I posted it with a picture of Joel Olstein with his big saccharine, sweet, smoke, phony smile, and it says um, something about uh, if your evangelist is richer than the than the people in the con congregation, if your pastor is wealthy, much wealthier than you are, then you helping, like you're helping him yeah. a lot more than and he's helping you. He's not helping you, you are actually helping him. You're a socialist. Yeah. 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 Well, not only that, if you look back, let's just take that, uh, the situation with Mary and Joseph uh, back then. They, they, they had to go through some, some trials and tribulations and etc. Mm -hmm. to uh, come to the end of uh, you know the birth process and etc. But old Mr. Joel Olstein, I mean, God helps him get parking spaces in the in the parking and lot. It helps him, and it helps him get wealthier than he already is. Yeah, that's why he's smiling all the time. Yeah, ain't that something? Yeah. It was so quiet before. Every time we start the show, this friggin' dog starts barking and these idiots start talking outside. But anyway... Hey, shit happens. Yeah. You know? You're damn right it happens. Well, uh, we have the door open because uh, it's lovely outside. Seventy-some degrees. And, uh, you know, the, the screen door is partially open so that we, I don't have to let the cats in and out. But if the noise continues, I will have to shut the door. But uh, but anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Oh. Quiet! Like that's going to help, right? Mm-hmm. That draws more attention. Mark your calendars! Yeah. Sky watchers. Ah! I think I know where this is going. In one week. A total lunar eclipse will turn the moon an eerie shade of red. A lot on the moon. The infamous blood on the moon is coming. At 1.58 a.m. on April the 15th. You're going to the moon, Alice. Tuesday. You're going to the moon, Alice. Tuesday. Bang, zoom. <laughs> the full lunar eclipse when all the moon is shaded by the earth begins just over an hour later at 3.07 a.m. and lasts until 4.25 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You hear that, amateur astronomers? You know, polish up that lens, get your telescopes ready. And uh, I'm sure there'll be much better photos with the, uh, you know, the, uh, the big <laughs> telescopes you know, and uh, the space telescope. The eclipse will be visible across almost the entire continental United States, most of Canada, and Central America and parts of South America. The coming red moon, often called a blood moon, it's a bad omen, is a perfectly natural occurrence. How often does it come, though? Every time the moon passes completely into the shadow of the earth, it turns a reddish color. Yeah, but... Sometimes a bright copper. It was prophesied, blood on the moon. Other times, the dark reddish brown of dried blood. That's right. Dried blood, which is probably... Uh, I, I think blood is red because of its iron content. When it's bright, yeah, when it's fresh. Yeah. Then it turns blue. And I hear that the blood of plants, which is chlorophyll, is green because of magnesium. Correct me if I'm wrong. You ever but see vitamins under the microscope? They're beautiful. They're gorgeous. Sub Absolutely beautiful. All of them. All of them have a unique. You know what it looks like? It looks like a modern abstract art. Same with snowflakes. There you go. They're different. Everyone different. Different pattern. Yet they got the six points. 
Everyone has six points? Six points. Really? But they're all different. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, if there were five-pointed, that would be more interesting because a pentagram is five-pointed. Solomon, uh, the seal of Solomon. Ooh. The pentagram. Ooh. 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 Blood on the moon. D. Ann Palmer thought the soft-spoken man with his long list of clients was her best massage therapist. Uh. Instead, she fears he may destroy her business. Why is that? Felipe D. Cruz may also leave Palmer forever questioning her own judgment in people. Cruz, who worked as an independent contractor at Palmer's D2 Day Spa in Englewood, New Jersey. Not far from here. Day Spa. <laughs> I always wondered. Well, I guess that means it's open during the day, right? For about 10 months. That makes it classy. That makes it sound legit. I run a day spa. Was indicted this week on charges of sexually assaulting women. So if, if a female masseuse get, uh, attempts to give a happy ending to a male, he, goes, he leaves with a smile on his face and he goes around bragging to everybody that the, the massage therapy included a little extra. But if a woman gets a happy beginning or happy ending or whatever, she freaks out. See, you see how life and society has all these double standards when it comes to men and women? It, it can do a whole show on it. Palmer said she let Cruz go immediately after he was arrested in November. Wow. When a woman said he inappropriately fondled her. Since then, five other women have come forward to report unwanted sexual contact. <laughs> as soon as he was arrested, I told him not to come back, Palmer said. It was such a shock. He had impeccable credentials. He had insurance. But I'm just devastated knowing that a woman devastated. who came to my place of business was assaulted. Oh, like he... Well... A day spa is really a legitimate therapeutic place. You know, when you hear the word day spa, you don't expect anything else unless it's, you know... It's run by... Uh, Cruz... Well, I don't want to get into it. <laughs> 52 years old, right. was indicted on 14 counts including sexual assault yeah. by digital penetration. Digital? That means he stuck his fingers in. Oh, digits. Digital. <laughs> I was wondering. Not computer. I thought it was something that a, an accountant does when he has sex. Digital, <laughs> digital penetration. Oh, man. And 11 counts of criminal sexual contact. Wow on incidents dating back to March of 2013. And the doctors of the, of the 19th century used to uh, uh, have a little apparatus that they administered masturbation to the women to release, to cure hysteria, I think? Yes. Release their tension. Yeah. So, releasing the woman's tension as part of a, uh, a business transaction, a therapeutic uh, uh, treatment, is real is bad is taboo well but not women, to a not to a man i guess the women did not want it well what the, are you going to do away with their right i guess to be unassaulted you know what you know what see this guy's very he's very liberal this uh, reverend dr william j eisenman liberal let me tell you something uh when you think about it sexual harassment on in a workplace does not have to necessarily mean it's 
harassment. If a man asks a woman out or if a man uh, tells a little, a little risque joke, the woman could blow the whistle and complain about it because it's unwanted because maybe the man's not her type or maybe she's not interested or whatever. She could turn around and, and take a little thing like asking her out on a date and, and scream a harassment. Little thing like sticking his fingers where they don't belong? That's harass that that can be oh. that's harassment. No, I'm talking about I'm talking well, we're not reading about I'm that. talking about uh, how the law like how oh, a woman can get away with screaming harassment. It, it could be something minor and she can scream harassment or it can actually be harassment. Why can't a, a man can do that too? What if he has a harassing boss? Oh, you mean like what, if the, he can do what if the what if the guy, let's say, has a girlfriend or he has a wife and his female boss uh, a little, uh, black, you know? black, tries to blackmail him and right. say, you want to keep your job, so on and so forth? That's harassment, sure. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. That's definitely harassment. You know. But. It is unclear where the other alleged assaults took place. Palmer said Cruz worked in other spas and also had his own business. It is also unclear where Cruz lived. Cruz obtained his license from the State Division of Consumer Affairs in 2012 and has had no disciplinary actions against him. On Friday, a spokesman for the department said the New Jersey Board of Massage and Body Work Therapy will contact the Bergen County Prosecutor's Office for additional information for its use in considering possible disciplinary action. Mm -hmm. According to jail records, <coughs> excuse me, Cruz was released on $75,000 bail after his first arrest. Oh, come on, 75 grand? He was arrested again several days later after other women contacted law enforcement to say they had also been assaulted. What about just uh, suspending his, his license for a he while? He is being held at the Bergen County Jail. Okay. okay. Customers at the spa fill out surveys after their massages, and crews always receive excellent reviews. Yeah. He was very quiet, into Eastern philosophy. Just, he massaged men and women, nah, and no, no one ever complained to me about him. No guy, no dude is going to massage me. No friggin' way. He seemed like a great therapist. Mm -hmm. Her business has taken a big hit from Cruz's departure. Oh, yeah. He had about 100 clients, wow. but only about 10 returned after he left. Oh, really? And new clients. Wow who heard about the arrest have canceled their appointment. Only 10 people out of 100 return mm -hmm. were return repeat customers. Re repeat. You want to get a check at the dude? Hey, you want to see the dude? Repeat clientele. Now, now a day spa can incorporate uh, acupressure, acupuncture, reflexology. Right. Oh, no wonder. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't let that I, guy touch me. I wouldn't want a dude like this uh, giving therapy uh, <laughs> to my significant other. <laughs> let me just put this in in front of here. All right, you can see that. Well, you know, it'll, yeah, because... Uh, okay, now, this is the guy. Let me know if it's in view. Hold on. Uh, a little, just a bit closer. That's all. All right. Higher, that's, lower? That's the base. It's right on. It's it's okay. It's it. Is it even? It's okay. You got it. Yeah. You see this guy's mug? <laughs> Would you let your uh, significant other g receive a uh, 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 body contact therapy from him? He's he's even more uh, uh, crude looking than the Duck Dynasty uh, boys. But he was well licensed and etc. Yeah, but it's like. Holy crap. 
you know. Oh my God. I mean, aren't yeah. we supposed to respect uh, 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 titles and? Yeah, titles but you got you got you have to look professional when you're a professional. You can't look like a like you're part of a motorcycle gang. Uh. You know. But anyway, um, there are s more. There's more than one therapy that's uh, provided at a day spa. There's a whole bunch of them. You know, they use hot stones, mud bath. There's a mud. There's a reflexology, uh, acupressure, Swedish massage, acupuncture. Uh, there's a aromatherapy, which I don't know. You just smell something that you love. Could be anything. Could be spaghetti sauce. <laughs> it could be. Uh, it could be. Uh, I don't think they have bottled the essence could, of spaghetti sauce. <laughs> it could be uh, particular herbs and spices. You know, uh, it, it has different effects on the body. And then there's uh, there's an oxygen bar. That yeah, you yeah. like when you're in a hospital and they put the 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 soft rubber tube. In your in your nostrils, and you're breathing in 100% pure oxygen. Mm. That has an energizing effect. Then there's a, a hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which is supposed to rejuvenate brain cells that have been it didn't damaged. Rejuvenate, Michael. Uh, 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 what am I call it? Michael J. Fox. No, no, no. The singer. Michael. Michael. Jackson. Jackson. What do you mean? What do you mean? He was a dope addict. He did hyperbaric. Well, if you if you keep on if you keep on abusing drugs, yeah. you got it. When, when you get brain ain't too good, no matter how many hyperbarics if, you get. If you're doing um, positive, healthy, holistic things in your life that are supposed to be uh, constructive and helpful to you, Man. you don't keep the bad habits that. Yeah screwed you up in the first place it's like a it's like a diabetic or a hypoglycemic uh taking let's say a diabetic ta it takes uh supplementation and takes uh maybe medication from the doctor and continues to eat the wrong diet continues to eat sugar and refined carbs you, you cannot you got to work with it you got to work with therapies not against them you know uh this is Dear Abby. Oh, what, what, what are we doing? Light stuff at the beginning? Yes. Okay. My wife and I were discussing our sons-in-law and young men in their 20s and 30s in general. Oh, God. They're always, women are always analyzing us. We were wondering where the attitude of any money I earn is mine. Well... In a marriage or live-in situation got started? Well, what guys tell me is their, their significant others uh, uh, feel that, uh, that like the wife's money is hers and the husband's money is theirs, but the husband's money is never just his. And he has to always negotiate and, and talk over any spending <laughs> of any kind with her, but, but she by by a sheer fact that you know uh, she's she's a, a female is automatically the boss and automatically calls the shots but who do you blame like like my friend told me well who do you blame <laughs> you, the, the suck or the sucky or the suck the suck you know it's the suck it's the it's the the person who puts up with it you have to blame for the first few years of my daughter and her husband Joe's marriage Joe resented giving her any of the money he earned. The money should be in, should not be involved in love and, and romance and relationships. You should, I don't know, it causes trouble. My other daughter's husband thinks nothing of spending money on himself and his friends without consulting her. But women spend money on themselves all the time. We have seen this attitude reflected in their friends as well. They don't seem to discuss with each other how each is spending their joint income. Well, if it's joint, then you have to consult one another. That's a different story. 
there seems to be an element of selfishness. You mean joint account? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, then you, then, uh, yeah, then I have to be fair. You, you, you heard the guy yeah. up the front where at the beginning of the thing you said, any money I earn is mine. And he's not talking about well, a then, joint account. Then why doesn't he simply have a separate account for... Why does he get married? Why, why does a joint, why is a joint account mandatory if you're married? It's two people. It's optional. It they be. are to become one when they are married. Well, then you have fights about about the man wants to buy something, the woman wants to buy something, you know, then you end up with these fights over money, which causes trouble in, in a relationship. Well, what if it's a joint account? Well, joint accounts, are, account? joint accounts are not are not forced by law. They're optional. You, de you, you decide to have a joint checking account. Well, you also decide to get married, don't you? Well, the, the to share a life with someone, not two different people. Yeah, but money causes a lot of problems. Well, also the way it is handled causes a lot of problems. <sighs> but smart, let us not get a. Uh, let us not get uh, take the onus off the individuals involved. Yeah, I mean, they are making is, the decision. She makes money. It's technically her money. He makes money because he, he's working for Well, not for when it. you're married. He's working for it. It's technically his money. You put in a joint account, then it becomes their, their, it becomes money. their money. That's Now, right. the problem is when her money and his money becomes their money uh -huh. in a joint account, then you need to to um, consult, consult one another about specific sizable spending. I'm not talking about spending like going to a Chinese takeout and getting some lunch. I'm talking about... Like, does he want a big flat screen TV that costs several hundred dollars? Or a motorcycle. Or a motorcycle, or, or, or a jacuzzi for the house, or she wants yes. to get a, uh, she wants to do something insane, like buy a very expensive designer outfit for a thousand dollars, which is ridiculous, uh, but you know, uh, let's just say it's, she wants to do that, or what's even crazier, I think it's crazy. Uh, on the local news here in New York City, they were talking about the uh, rising costs of wedding receptions. Why must that much money be spent on a wedding reception for a marriage that statistically will be dead in about a year? Is statistically is doomed to fail. Why should a bride buy a wedding dress instead of rent a wedding dress? for a marriage that statistically has all the odds against it. But these people, these uh, people on the news, they were all glamorizing it. They weren't questioning it. That's why I hate the American media. Like They, they weren't saying, this is crazy. Why can't mm -hmm. they spend that money on, on furniture for a new apartment or condo? Why can't they go on a better honeymoon? Why do they have to spend Fifty thousand dollars, or thirty grand, or twenty grand on a wedding reception. Mm -hmm. Put it to better use for the couple. It's insane. My wife and I have been married for forty years, and from the beginning, <laughs> I have always considered what each of us earned was ours, not mine or hers. But that works both ways. If it, it's ours, it has to be ours across the board. Well, you just said that. Well, I mean, it, her. she has to comply with this, too. Well, I'm sure that when you marry someone that you can discuss these things with, there comes a meeting of the mind. Okay, what about, what about uh, 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 human nature and different personalities? What about people that do not want to comply with their marriage vows? Well, we're talking about them. Non right here. Non-compliance. Well, we're talking about them right here. We're talking about selfish people. You see this dude up here, old man. Who are Mr. Old man Leonard Nimoy, Mr. Spock. This is how I look. I try to analyze things in life. I try to use logic and the facts, brother. Nothing but the facts. We it's always it. discuss any significant purchases. Right. And I have always believed it was my responsibility to support my family. 
I realize the current economic situation, mm -hmm. but the attitude should still be there. And now, we get Dear Abby's answer. This is the new Dear Abby, not the one that That's died. Right. Not, you, yeah. You have raised an interesting subject. Yeah. There is a difference between living together and being married because of our legal system. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because people who cohabit without benefit of marriage are considered individuals in the eyes of the law, it is probably prudent to keep their financial affairs separate. I agree with her. However, However. each person should contribute to the expenses they share. That's true. In a marriage, the situation is different. The law assumes that the man and the wife are one unit. He's supposed to be, uh, you know, trying to get people to comply to this. This is not another story. Is the mindset you adopted when you and your wife were married. There is a tendency among young couples not only because of the high divorce rate, but also what they have been exposed to in the media from the time they were born to view marriage as something that might not last. Everything is disposable in the American society. Pets, uh, everything. Everything is, uh, you know, it's just horrible. You know, it's like uh, nobody sticks it out and, and commits themselves dedicates himself devotion to anything. What was that movie, Braveheart? Yeah. With Mel Gibson? Yeah. What if, what if those people never stood with him? Then he would have gave up. Well, he would, he would have never gave up, but he would have he he lost, and he lost the battle anyway. He but, lost it know, anyway, yeah. yeah. But, they, but he put up a good fight, though. Yeah, and, and the people stuck together. What about the people in Valley Forge? That with Washington. Ah, who were freezing their freaking asses off. Right. With Washington. What if they just said, hey, we're going home. You know, I said, you know what? Let's remain a colony. I, I'm getting frostbite out here. I'm going home. I got no shoes. Goodbye, Georgie Porgy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't have any of that. Go back to Mount Vernon, New York. A lot of commitment today, I'll tell you the truth, is to drugs. Man, you're right you know? about that. I mean, there are people who commit to their death. I mean, when you when you drugs. see the behavior of younger generation people that are supposed to like uh, take over the world, and yeah, when, be smarter than us. When we're in a nursing home, and you see how they they never say thank you if you if you do something nice for them or hold the door for them, and they and they 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 feel very entitled to everything. They're very entitled, mm. and uh, and they just think it that every everything's has to just fall on their lap because they're entitled. You know what I mean? So, and, and there's no loyalty. It's pretty scary, you know. That's the next sentence. There is also a sense of entitlement among many, not all, that makes them centered on themselves. There you go. We have become a society in which disposability has spread from material possessions Relations. I had no idea this was in the article. You see how in tune me and him are? Mm -hmm. I had no idea he was going to mention disposable and entitlement. I would love to hear what my readers, particularly my younger readers' views are regarding this. Excellent uh, light article, but very, very much tied into today's society. Just go to the Bible and read 2 Timothy, and you'll see how the people. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, I believe. 2 it Timothy is. 3, you'll see. Uh, 1 to 14. It will describe how people will become in the end times. We're going to take a, a lunch break because it's time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight known as lunch, followed by our promo commercial, and then we will return to this show. And this is the, um, uh, the good, uh, I'm sorry, this is the Palm Sunday and Good Friday 2014 week show the pagan Easter show pagan paganism that's right 
This has been a Megalife 21 production. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club, and after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with the conservative right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censors. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Hi, this is William Morrow. Are you one of those people who join a health club and after they have your big overpriced annual membership, you notice that you're on your own with little or no results even after all the promises? Then the website personal trainer is for you. Thank you very much, William H. Morrow III. So you lost another argument with the conservative, right-wing Republican. He talked over you. He screamed and yelled. He brought out the Bible. He thumped it. He quoted scripture to you. And you were lost because you came at him with facts. Nothing but facts. And you expected that that would, uh, that would make you look good. That would make you win the argument, but it didn't. You know why you lost the argument? You know why you're going to lose your next argument? Because you don't read censored. Censored, a 30-year-old newsletter that shows you how to defeat a conservative. Read censored, and you'll have all the ammunition you need. Every time you get into an argument with a right-wing conservative, uh, so-called Christian. Censored, that's all you need. Read it, and defeat a conservative. Greetings, listeners. Let me speak to you for a moment about the foundation of our entire organization, Newsletter Censored. It was founded by our mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman, in 1977. It discusses the five taboos of American life, politics, religion, health, human sexuality, and child rearing. You won't find anything like this in the mainstream media and the press. It reveals the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? We are living in the end times, so in order to defeat a conservative and save America, you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com, click on the printable order form page, and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription. 
This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. Okay. We're back. And uh, as our promo commercial, promo, promo, I like to use the word promo. As our promo says, or as I am saying, the very best way to join and be a part of our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. It's the best way to be a part of us. Go there now, newsletter. Or to enlighten yourself. To enlighten yourself, NewsletterCensored.com, uh, which is the is hard hitting truth you're not going to hear anywhere else. You know, uh, uh, politics, current news topics, and the home of The God Project by uh, William J. Eisenman, a doctor of divinity. And, um, but not this issue. And that's another private uh, uh, dilemma that we have that we talked about Wednesday. But anyway, moving on. Uh, let us uh, sink our teeth in back into these readings, cool. and we have some very appropriate readings this uh, um, Palm Sunday and Good Friday of 2014. There are many appropriate readings that we have this week that were handpicked by Dr. Bill. Continue. New scientific tests suggest a fragment of papyrus in which Jesus speaks of my wife is more likely an ancient document than a forgery, according to an article published on Thursday by the Harvard Theological Review. It sounds very um, qualified to me. The text, which is written in Coptic and is roughly the size of a business card, specifically contains the phrase, Jesus said to them, my wife. Karen King, a Harvard professor of divinity, says the papyrus probably dates to the 8th century Egypt. based on radiocarbon dating tests on the ink's chemical composition. If it was written in the 8th or even the 9th century, it's still an ancient document. It's not a modern forgery. But she stressed, the fragment doesn't prove that the historical Jesus was married. Most reliable evidence from early Christianity is silent on Jesus's marital status. If anything, the papyrus provides insight into early Christianity's debates over family life. Early Christians were extremely interested in whether or not they should marry or be celibate, or whether it was okay to have a family, or whether one should remain virginal. King said the papyrus, which contains about eight partial lines of text, appears to make the case that mothers and wives can be disciples. Jesus references his mother, wife, and another female as his disciples. Apparently, discuss whether a woman identified as Mary can join their ranks. Mm. Of course, the Catholic Church dismissed uh, these female individuals as uh, being a part of the fold, 
According to King's translation, the text then reads, Jesus said to them, My wife. That is followed in the next line by, She is able to be my disciple. King originally revealed existence of the papyrus in 2012, calling it the gospel of Jesus' wife. Her announcement sparked debate among religious and ancient scholars. But publication of her findings was delayed for the tests. King maintains the gospel moniker was appropriate. While the papyrus is small, too small to discern anything definitive about who composed it, King argued on Thursday that the text belongs to a body of ancient texts that illuminate facets of Jesus' life. It contains a dialogue between Jesus and his disciples. She said that would normally put it in the category of gospel. King said she hopes the research puts to rest questions about the text's authenticity. But Brown University professor Leo Depoit in an analysis also published on Thursday by the Harvard Theological Review was not convinced. Mm -hmm. He said the text contains grammatical errors that a native Coptic speaker would not make. King suggested that the text is written in an informal style that is found in other ancient Coptic texts. Others have questioned the mysterious providence of the papyrus. King said she obtained the text in 2011 from a donor who wants to remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. That owner had purchased the text in 1999 from a collector who in turn had acquired it in East Germany around 1963, she said. Okay. Now in the Bible, Jesus' wife is the church. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Eighth century. That's 800 years after he died. Quite a long time. Quite a long time. It's almost a thousand. Well, 800 years later it was written. Right? Right. It's from the 8th century. And when he used um, the word the bride... He didn't use the word bride. He said he, my wife. My wife. But I mean in other context of the Bible, he was referring to the uh, the church, the body. Oh, Ch yes, when church. Jesus did. But the point of it is, there are a lot of Jesuses throughout history. You read Josephus, you'll see. There's no, there's no evidence that this is talking about, like it said in the article, the historical Jesus. Mm -hmm. See? No evidence to that. And then again, 800 years after he was walking the earth. Right. Republicans mm -hmm. blocked a Senate bill on Wednesday aimed at narrowing the pay gap between men and women. Lovely. An election year ritual that Democrats hope will help s spur women to back them in this fall's congressional election. Mm -hmm. GOP lawmakers said the measure could hinder employers from granting raises or permitting flexible hours in exchange for lower pay. Oh, the poor employers! Mm -hmm. We have to feel sorry for the poor employers! Oh, I feel my heart bleeds for them. We're the people that, that can that write off the cost of labor. Yeah. Yeah, I really feel sorry for them. For fear of costly lawsuits, 
For Democrats, the bill was the latest stressing income in fairness that they are pushing this campaign season. A procession that includes proposals to extend jobless benefits, boost the minimum wage, help students and families afford college loans. Republicans in Congress continue to oppose serious efforts to create jobs, grow the economy, and level the playing field for working families, President Obama said after the vote. Mm -hmm. Why, I thought the GOP were job producers, were interested in creating jobs. Not in the U.S. Ah. It'd be mainland China or Bangladesh. I see. We see. The ultimate warrior. Poor guy. I gotta do a. Uh, <clears throat> one of the most colorful stars in pro wrestling history has died. Let me uh, do a quick moment of silence. The, uh, the the uh, untimely, uh, shocking, sudden uh, death of the uh, 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 professional wrestling legend, legend, legendary, uh, the ultimate warrior. After I just uh, listened to his speech at the uh, WWE uh, Hall of Fame induction, his induction speech, which contained a very mysterious, uh, strange, cryptic prophetic um, words that people noticed was a little odd in his speech, almost like it was a farewell speech. But anyway, a moment of silence for the ultimate warrior. Okay, all right, continue with the reading. He was 54 years old. The WWE said warrior, who legally changed his name from James Helwig, died Tuesday in Scottsdale, Arizona. Yeah, he, he lived in Arizona. Police spokesman Sergeant Mark Clark said he collapsed while walking with his wife to their car at a hotel and was pronounced dead at the hospital. There were no signs of foul play. An autopsy was planned for today. One of pro wrestling's biggest stars in the late 1980s, Warrior earlier this week was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. He was juiced, right? Back in the day. I don't, know, that's why still, he I don't know if he still did. That's why he died. The damage is lasting. Um, also, um, many pro wrestlers uh, have uh, dabbled in recreational drugs and addiction to painkillers also. On top of that, alcohol, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah, you just throw everything together. Reminds me of uh, Whitney Houston's... Uh, Autopsy report where she they found that she was mixing things, popping pills and drinking and such, you know. But she did say that crack is whack. Yeah, sure it was. Crack is whack. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and she did have a young daughter, and you know you figure people. Well, so did that guy that just did with the heroin uh, just died. You figure. He you had know, kids. You figure all these people with dangerous self-destructive habits would at least quit for the sake of the kids for the sake of their young children well you know the least they can do right actually going back to the dear abby reading <laughs> not if they're selfish if they're all about me 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 that ain't gonna happen ain't gonna give a goddamn about who, other people they don't even trust in themselves right so there you go. Yeah. Bible films like Noah may be raking in at the box office. Actually, it wasn't doing that well. 
Captain America was the biggie. Something like 76 million there one weekend. And Noah was second. So it's not raking them in, per se. But fewer people are reading the original and taking it seriously. The American Bible Society's latest state of the Bible survey documents steep skepticism that the good book is a God book. We are seeing an incredible change in just a few years time. The study conducted annually by Barna Research found one the most engaged readers who read the Bible almost daily and see it as sacred are now matched by skeptics who say it's just a book of stories and advice. Both groups measured 19%. And I will interject here, both groups know nothing of the red line. That runs through the Bible. That doesn't sound like they do. No. Number two. While the engaged stay steady since 2011, skeptics grew by 10% since the same survey was conducted in 2011. Number three. The percentage of people who view the Bible as sacred has dropped to 79% down from 86% in 2011. The study is based on 2,036 interviews with U.S. adults in January and February. Mm -hmm. The statistics are sobering but not discouraging. The key is adjusting our outreach <clears throat> to reel in the next generation. Millennials ages 18 to 29 lead the skeptics tally. And I shall interject that is one of the problems. Mm -hmm. These proselytizers and evangelicals. They want to reel the people in. Yeah. And that is a problem. Because that's not what the Bible advises, not what Jesus advised. Mm -hmm. Okay? Number four. 64% say the Bible is sacred literature compared with 79% of all adults. Okay. Number five. 35% say the Bible offers everything a person needs to know to lead a meaningful life, compared with half of all adults. Oh, yeah. Six. 39% of millennials admit they never read the Bible. Well, they see how big it is, and, uh, you know, modern people are lazy when it comes to reading books compared with 26% of all that, then why are they beginning to read online? I guess it's... it's, it's Where it is even harder not, to read. Not really, if you use a concordance. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about reading. Well, you lower the... Um, you, lower, you, you adjust the brightness and the contrast of your computer monitor, so it's not glaring. I know what you're talking about. The glare can be very straining on the eyeballs. And yet you'll see, like for instance, PC World Magazine has gone digital. Oh, what does that I mean? have not read a, P a PC uh, Magazine for four months. I think it's easier to... Uh, because it is online. I think it's easier to have the PC World Magazine on your table in front of you. Be honest Bingo. With you. It's it's Bingo. really less straining on the eyes. I mean, really, the, the 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 glare of a computer monitor is much harder on the eyes than than reading 
or the old-fashioned way. Even the Kindle had to go to a white paper mode to be a little easier to read. Kindle White, I believe it's called. I think they're just doing it so to, to lower their cost. No kidding. Uh, the, you know, but does that have anything to do with you as the consumer, the customer? No, they don't. Not at all. They don't do the right thing by the consumer. Well, of course not. You are supposed to get in line with what they do. And therein lies our uh, a Chiseler's Hall of Shame induction for this week, which is which are magazines that have given up their paper magazines for digital online magazines and I think what what gave them this idea uh, Dr. Bill were the ebooks exactly the ebooks were the first to start that and they're doing it just to save money not to do what's best for their consumers that's correct Chisler's Hall of Shame PC we, World is one of them. Induction. Have, yes. We have to find where they are hurting. What questions millennials are asking. The society has already started that by creating Bible watching, excuse me, Bible reading journeys on its website. People can key in a word such as hope, parenting, job loss, or loneliness and be steered to seven. 10 or 40 day journey of scripture selections designed to address that concern. Yeah. Well, we have a very nice online King James Bible on the uh, Cyber Church of God, which is uh, on, on our link, you know, on, on the, um, the Mega Life 21 hard hitting truth radio station, which has changed. Uh, we have uh, our shows on demand now where you can just go there, click on the playlist, and click on the show of your choice and, and, and listen to it and view it, you know, and including this show here uh, that we do every Saturday. And uh, Mega Life 21 Live is there, and uh, The God Project is there, and uh, censored on demand. So, you know, let's go there and help yourself. The data confirm we just can't hand them a Bible and expect them to find the answers. We have to get out the word to give God's word a chance. It's 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 urgent. It's urgent. Like 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 that dog shutting up soon is urgent to me. I think it's outside now. It's kind of a it's it's like a an obnoxious human like Rush Limbaugh, you know, a dog that doesn't shut the hell up. It's like, pay attention to me, me, me. You know, take care of me, me, me. I mean, you don't see... I mean, yeah, Rush is like that. Rush is... Uh, I'm trying to figure out why he's upset with uh, Stephen Colbert. Stephen Colbert taking over for David Letterman. I mean, why should he care <laughs> about maybe Colbert? He is, maybe he assumes that Colbert is an actual conservative. And he's selling out. Maybe he's too stupid to realize that it's satire? Because he doesn't watch the show. Well, David Letterman always, he, always tore conservatives and a new ass asshole on, on his show. He, uh, you know, David Letterman uh, has always been progressive, except when Chris Christie was a guest on his show. Then he kissed his fat ass and endorsed him. Okay, a corporate sellout, should I say, David Letterman? Corporate sellout? When when the Republican is your guest on the show, you suck up to him. When he's not there, you tear him apart and become liberal. Sounds like a corporate suck up to me. Well, maybe we'll stick David Letterman in the Chisler's Hall of Shame for being phony. Just like uh, Al Franken. Frankenberry, another phony baloney. You know, 
Doesn't have the balls to stand up to the fat cats. Many storms of tumbleweed. Uh, I always love tumbleweeds. Have invaded the drought stricken prairie of southern Colorado. Oh, yeah, America's experiencing a, uh, still experiencing a horrible drought. Are tumbleweeds, uh, when they tumble, are they live plants or are they dead? They're dead. Ah, oh. I, I always thought of, if they were alive, I would love to tie one to a leash in my yard and, and just have a pet tumbleweed, you know, this tumbling back and forth and be alive. Blocking rural roads and irrigation canals, briefly barricading homes, and... An elementary school. Didn't an old cowboy sing a song about the tumbling tumbleweed? Living along with the tumbling tumbleweed. tumbleweed. <laughs> Firefighters even had to cut a path through them to get to a pregnant woman who feared she'd be trapped in her home if she went into labor. The invasion of the tumbleweed an iconic symbol of both the West's rugged terrain and the rugged cowboys who helped settle it. You know what? Has conjured images of the Dust Bowl of yeah. 80 years ago. There are two iconic symbols of the American Southwest and Western movies. There's the saguaro cactus, the majestic huge saguaro cactus. Did you cactus, ever see a saguaro seed? And, 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 and it, it, they can live over a hundred. They can live hundreds of years. Now, what is it like? It's very tiny. Really? And oh, excuse me. That's no the the tree. The tree that grows hundreds of feet tall. The saguaro cactus. Yeah. The tree. It's not a tree. It's a cactus. Well, this is the tree. I'm talking anyway, about anyway. The seed of this tree is tiny. Well, like an a isn't it an acorn? Isn't it an acorn? Well, it's not tiny. Compared to a massive old oak tree, isn't an acorn tiny? So what you're trying to tell me is the seed of cacti... What the heck is going on here? I dropped my friggin' tea because he got me nervous. He, he kept on calling saguaro cactus a tree. It's a cactus. I'm talking about a tree. Why are you jumping from a saguaro cactus to a tree? The saguaro was an accident. Excuse me? The tree that I'm talking about Yeah. grows to hundreds of feet. Right. Tall. Use a, use paper here, hey. What? Under there. Where am I going? Under the table here. Under this table. table? Yeah, over here by me. There should be paper. Oh, you mean newspaper? Yeah. Oh. Alright. Actually, that is a smart idea. No, don't, don't cling with it. Well, no, oh, how am I going to How am I gonna stop it, it up? Soak it up. Put the paper. I'm trying to soak it up. Alright, no. it's done. It's done. Don't let it disturb the show, for Christ's sakes. Continue. Explain. Now, now I gotta edit this this piece. Give me more work. It never ends. Yeah, you're right. It never said ends. Said Chris Talbot as he used a snow shovel to push the weeds off his lawn. How could a saguaro be a goddamn into tree? Into a stack on the street in Colorado Springs. We're not talking about saguaros. I was the quarrel was an accident put into that sentence. We're talking about a gigantic tree that comes from a tiny seed. Okay. That looks like a mustard seed. I was it doesn't look like a mustard seed. I just compared both. It's tiny. A mustard seed. 
And this well, heaven forbid I should mention the two iconic images of the American Southwest, which happened to be the tumbleweed and the saguaro cactus. The latest drought, which began in 2010, has created tumbleweed Fucking trouble in parts of New Mexico, me off. Oklahoma, yeah. and Texas. How does the tumbleweed start when it's alive? Desiccated Russian thistle, a woody leafy plant, and kochia, both invasive weeds from Eurasia, are the culprits. You know, I just finished this reading because it's, it's jumping around to Russia and Eurasia. In Colorado, herds of cattle would eat the tumbleweed, helping to keep it in check. But many ranchers in recent years Ugh. have reduced or gotten rid of their animals because of the drought. Yeah. After the first winter freezes in November, the plants broke loose and began rolling with the wind. They looked like sheep running across the prairie. Because the whole prairie was alive. For municipal authorities, there's a big price tag for that tumbleweed. Crowley County, High Plains country of ranching and farming east of Pueblo in southern Colorado, has spent $108,000 since November. More than a third of its annual budget. Clearing roads and bridges of tumbleweed to make sure residents and emergency vehicles can move. It's labor intensive work. Gathering tumbleweeds is like gathering kindergartners with a bunch of balloons and trying to keep them in one location. Can imagine. El Paso County, which includes Colorado Springs, has spent two hundred nine thousand dollars. Try pushing them with heavy equipment, and they just roll on you. Does it mention the botanical name of the tumbleweed? If you were listening, we did said it when you complained about Eurasian. So the tumbleweed did not originate in the Americas? Russian thistle. All right. And coxia. K-O-C-H-I-A. Which is are it? the culprit. Which is originally from Eurasia. So what you're saying is they're invasive. They're not indigenous to the, the American Southwest. No, not now. But they're there. I like to analyze things scientifically and know their origins. And I guess I'll have to Google search it to find out the details. Since this Poluca from our... Didn't, you know, go into the history of the tumbleweed like they should have. Anyway, continue. They just roll on you. That's it. They uh, fly over the top. Yeah, that's like uh, saying... Uh, I. I uh, I'm gonna go take a dip in the dip in the seaman pond. You know, it, the people down in Florida they they don't call them sand fleas when they start biting you. They call them no see em bugs. I like to be correct and and scientific and tell people they're they're not they're an invasive species. They're not originally from the American Southwest. They're Russian thistle. You know, they just go over that fact. And anyway, there's a, the drought is causing problems. Big time. Crops and uh, 
Almonds from California? Not just California, across the, across the uh, Americas. I mean, um, it, it, um, it might not end anytime soon, I hear. <laughs> it might go for a century. Who knows? <laughs> Even Gary No mentioned it's, it, 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 it may not be over anytime soon. Don't hold your breath. This drought. Well, and with the old frackers coming around using up the water and polluting it, hey, there won't be any left. But maybe Mr. Nestle can take the water that he owns, by the way. It's his water. Maybe he can filter it and make it potable. Well, a very uh, wise... For the rest of us a very pay for it, of course. A, a very wise Native American chief stated that uh, if the earth dies, so will man die. So, gee, what good is having, uh, what good is hoarding billions and billions of dollars if your planet is dying? We go back to the Abbey, dear Abbey article. <laughs> Selfish. Stupid and selfish. Uh, Short-term thinking, uh, cutting your nose off to spite your face. <laughs> Penny wise and pound foolish. So on and so on. The United States Supreme Court Oh boy. Has put a crushing blow on clean elections. The McCutcheon decision is not only a major setback for open government, but it is undoing decades of campaign finance law by removing limits on campaign contributions. It means elections can go to the highest bidder. Campaigns are already too much awash with special interest money. Now, we have given these special interests a blank check with an unlimited balance. This makes the Citizens United decision even worse. This decision gives a bullhorn to a corporation, to corporations, and the wealthy, but puts a gag on the average citizen. It is this dirty money from special interests that undermines our government and election process. We can never have clean air, clean water, without clean government. The only thing green in Congress or the legislature is the money from corporate polluters. This decision will allow more dirty money for dirty deals that will hurt the environment and people of this country. Not good. And you can thank the uh, the right wing Supreme Court justices for that. Yeah. Like old jolly face Antonin Scalia. Yeah. El Duce. Of course, someone didn't like that we were bashing Anton and Scalia on la last week's show. Well, why not? What's, what's with these suck-ups that are, they're not even rich? Why do they suck up to a political party that only helps the rich? And, they're, and they don't have a pot to piss in. They're living week to week. Because <coughs> they believe in politics. They will never vote for a Democrat because Democrats are baby killers. 
Democrats are secular humanists. The cult. Here, the cult strikes again. Okay. And Democrats hate religion. Don't we have a, 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 a an attack on religion at every Christ Mass? Yep. According to Bill O'Reilly and Sean Hannity. Yeah. Well. And so those people in those states, etc., will never vote for a Democrat. And and also the 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 blonde bombshells, uh, the witches of Fox News, the conservative coven of witches on Fox News that all happen to have blonde hair, yeah. and the stupid things they say. Michelle Bachman has been in the um, in the news saying some idiotic stuff. Well, she always says idiotic stuff, whether she's in the news or not. Yeah, she's... Because she happens to be an idiot. Uh, my apologies to retarded people that would come under the idiot. No, retarded uh, people, uh, uh, I don't consider schedule. them to be an idiot. I consider well, them... Well, they gauge it that way. Mentally challenged More uh, on uh, idiot, people. Et cetera, you know? Yeah, yeah, they're not. An idiot is somebody... Who has the facts in front of them, and they 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 choose not to absorb facts and the truth, and acknowledge the truth by choice. They choose not to, and they they end up shooting themselves in the foot, like teabaggers. Yeah, that, that would be an idiot. Yeah, like Michelle Bachman doesn't know anything about the Bible, believes that the, uh, uh, the, uh, the red, the red uh, 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 text in, in the Bibles was written by Jesus. That all I mean? Oh gosh, yes. Yeah, I mean, there are Bibles with the, you know, uh, speaking about Jesus and everything, and it's in red. So she believes that those are his words. It's like a comedy routine. If you okay. if you go online and you uh, you keep um, abreast of uh, no pun intended of of what Michelle Bachman has to say, well, what what stupid things she has to say from week to week. Her and Sarah Palin. You got elected. It, it's a comedy routine to to, but it's sadly it's real. They're really saying these things. They got elected. Well, that's even, Sarah was selected, not elected. That's even more s sad. That that's correct. People are voting for that. That's correct. And and what's even more uh, uh, serious of a serious matter is that a traditionally democratic state of Minnesota is where Michelle Bachman resides, or in, in, what she represents. She represents a traditionally democratic state in Minnesota and 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 Scott Walker is the governor of a traditionally democratic state of Wisconsin is that true that is true uh, and Mr. Christy Cream Cruz Christy and, and, over and, here and Paul uh, Paul Ryan again Wisconsin, Wisconsin right yes and Christy got elected here he got re Chris Christy gets Re-elected in New Jersey, a traditionally democratic state, mm. a blue state. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say much for Americans nowadays. Well, or it doesn't say much for the uh, way we um, find out about candidates. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we believe the propaganda instead of the truths yeah. about candidates. Yep. Okay. A simple test appears very good at ruling out heart attacks in people who go to emergency rooms with chest pain. A big public health issue and a huge worry for patients. A large study in Sweden 
found that the blood test, plus the usual electrocardiogram of the heartbeat, and accurate at showing which patients could safely be sent home rather than be admitted for observation and more diagnostics. Now if you get an echocardiogram and a stress test on top of that, that's considered a Who the hell is going to give somebody a stress test when they went to the emergency room? You got a point. With chest pain. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want. You can give an echo. You can do an echo and an, with the EKG, but and the blood test, but not a, not put them on a treadmill and do a stress test. I mean, they I they did that to me uh, one time, and I, I was okay, you know. And uh, but uh, when I went on that treadmill, I was like uh, Lee Majors, the Bionic Man. Man, I was. They cranked that thing up to the max. <laughs> Well, the one time that I took it many, 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 I many, flew, many, man, many, moons, I flew. many moons ago. Yeah, yeah. They started it obviously at a higher speed, and I went down on my face. That was stupid of them. That was really stupid of them. Well, that's what happened. You're not a candidate to go on the treadmill and have them oh, forget it. It was many, 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 many years ago, when I was a child. A child. A, a child. A mere infant. A mere infant. As Popeye's father would say. Of nearly 9,000 patients, mm -hmm. judged low risk by the blood test, and with normal electrocardiograms, only 15 went on to suffer a heart attack in the next month. And not a single one died. We believe that with this strategy, 20 to 25 percent of admissions to hospitals for chest pain may be avoided. The study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology and presented on Sunday at the Cardiology College's annual conference in Washington Chest pain sends more than 15 million people to emergency rooms in the United States and Europe every year. Usually turns out that to be due to anxiety, indigestion, or other less serious things than a heart attack. People may feel reassured by being admitted to a hospital so doctors can keep an eye on them, but that raises the risk of picking up an infection and having expensive care they'll have to pay a share of plus unnecessary tests. The study included nearly 15,000 people who went to the Karolinska University Hospital with chest pains over two years. About 8,900 had low scores on a faster, more sensitive blood test for troponin, troponin, a substance that is a sign of heart damage. The test has been available in Europe and Asia and Canada for three years, but it is not yet available in the United States. I wonder why. United States reigns supreme in health care, no? Oh, really? They think they reign supreme in maximizing profits? I think they reign supreme in myths. Yeah, myths. And putting down other forms of health care that, uh, that equate to uh, them not making as much money well, yeah. off the patient or the insurance company. You know, I think Germany and Japan and, uh, are very advanced uh, 
more so than the U.S. I happen to think uh, Chinese herbal medicine and Indian Ayurvedic herbal medicine are um, very superior in a different way because they, they treat the root of the problem early. They, they nip it in the bud early. They, they, they put emphasis on prevention rather than just treating symptoms that the uh, drug pushing allopaths do in the United States. Big pharma backed medical profession. You know, Doc, how are we doing on time? After four. All right. You got a small one? Or just call it a, yeah. call it a week? <clears throat> Got a week or Got a week. Got a week. I got all stressed out from the uh, tumbling tumbleweed story. You know, um, what I was trying to say is the 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 saguaro cactus is a very long lived cacti. It's beautiful. It's magnificent, um, and it's protected. And you know, when you see. Um, uh, paintings and drawings and even cartoons of the American Southwest, you usually see the saguaro cactus, the distinctive shape. And the tumbleweed is also another iconic figure of the American Southwest. So now I know the tumbleweed is in reality the Russian thistle. And Nicotia. that other... Nicotia. K-O-C-H-I-A. Nicotia. That might be... A an indigenous, <coughs> excuse me, an indigenous plant. Cochia sounds it sounds uh, American Indian. But anyway, happy uh, is good. Is uh, Palm Sunday uh, part of pagan pagan uh, Easter or no? Or that's an actual that's an actual Palm Sunday is when Jesus yeah came into town riding on a donkey. Right. To bring forth the prophecy made hundreds of years before by Isaiah. Okay. So okay. good. So Palm Sunday is a legitimate Christian holiday. It's not a holiday at all. It's I mean, it's, it's a day. It, it, it's it, well, well, you know, it's a day. It's a day. Yeah. It's the a Catholic day. The oh. church makes something of it. Yeah. Now, Good Friday is the is the Last Supper, right? But but he didn't. No. But not not in reality. Well, not only in not reality, in hours. From Friday to Sunday morning is only thirty six hours. When Jesus said he would be in the grave. Three days and three nights as Jonah was in the belly of the big fish. Mm -hmm. And that is 72 hours. See? So it is not even scientific from Friday to Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Well, have a good one. If you have seafood on um, on Good Friday, you know, enjoy. Uh, I might go to the uh, buffet for lunch that I normally <laughs> like to go to. The Flaming uh, Grill Supreme Buffet for a mere $7.40. I will stuff my face with many delectable seafood entrees. That's right. For... Uh, just for the sake, just as an excuse to eat fish. Yeah. But anyway, we'll see you next time. If we don't see you next time, if we see you next time, it'll be the uh, happy pagan Ishtar. Uh, uh, Maybe four. Yeah, it, 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 show. If, uh, if, I, if we don't see you next time, then have a happy uh, pagan Ishtar. Uh, and. Uh, uh, along with the uh, Good Friday and uh, Palm Sunday. And the Easter egg roll. Yeah, the uh, fertility god, right? Yeah, the worship of the sun, Sunday morning. Right. Well, that, that
That's uh. It'll take place at our uh, White House. Now let me ask you a question. White House. In the center of the Vatican, there is a very large, tall, uh, granite obelisk. Obelisk, yes. Now is that representative of the sun god Baal? The phallus symbol of the obelisk. All obelisks are phallus symbols. And but but that looks like the Washington Monument. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Yes, as many the, mm -hmm. and they said some say the steeple, you know the 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 pecker on top of a Protestant church also represents the uh, the obelisk. That might well, be stretching it. They're all obelisk. I, I mean obelisk, yeah. obelisk is. Yeah. More than one obelisk is an obelisk. Obelai. Obelai. <laughs> okay. Have a good one. People. Say salon to these people. people. Goodbye, people.